Welcome back. This time we're talking about Timeless, Season 1, Episode 4, Party at Castle Valar. This time our time travelers have to go back to December 7th, 1944, in the middle of Nazi-held Germany. And once they arrive, they set out to once again try to stop Flynn from changing the past. Only now, Flynn has access to atomic material, something that they think that he's going to give to the Nazis to change the tide of World War II. A theory that gains credence when they realize that he's in contact with Werner von Braun, inventor of the V-2 rocket, and who would eventually go to the American side and help them um, win the space race. Of course, our heroes turn out to be wrong. Flynn is not trying to help the Nazis, but instead trying to steal away von Braun and give him to the Soviets so the Americans never have access to his designs and future inventions. As it turns out, the atomic material stolen in the last episode was never meant for this mission, or really any of the time-traveling missions, but instead to actually power them, as Anthony is able to turn it into a long-term battery, lasting hundreds of years, so they will no longer have to plug in. Which is quite good for Flynn and his team, because this episode opened with Wyatt and a group of soldiers breaking into his hideout, after Gile was able to track it down. Aside from the atomic battery, this episode really didn't further too many of the primary storylines, and instead really was more of a character episode, giving all three of our main leads some really good building moments. And where the longer-term storylines did get developed, they were in sync with those more personal stories with our characters. Although several of the previous episodes have flirted with a number of well-known historical figures. This was really the first one that had one and actually two really front and center for mo the majority of the episode. That being Von Braun and British spy and famous author Ian Fleming. Our heroes have to partner with Fleming, who is undercover in Germany, so they can get into this castle where both Flynn and Von Braun are. Of course, as I mentioned, they originally thought they, that they were going to hook up this atomic material to um, a V-2 rocket that was being tested right outside the castle. But once they realize what Flynn's true mission is, they're able to, with a few hiccups, get Von Braun out of there and to the Allies like it happened in the original timeline. Now each episode so far has kind of had a theme, whether it's fate versus happen chance, or living your life for yourself. This one was definitely, and it was kind of overtly in a number of cases, finding out what you're fighting for. And in a way, all three of our characters had a moment where they had to decide exactly what they're fighting for. Now, the most obvious of these is Lucy, because she's actually asked to her face, what are you fighting for? And is told that she needs to find out what that is. She gives a little bit of her backstory to Wyatt and talks about this car accident that she had in which she nearly drowned. And ever since then, she has avoided situations that she couldn't control. And that does seem to fit the character that we have seen over these now four episodes. Now, obviously, traveling back in time to stop someone from altering history is a situation that she cannot control. And in addition to that, her life has been drastically changed because of their time, time travel antics. Her sister no longer exists. She has a fiancé that she's never met before. And she has sort of an empowering moment where she confronts the Homeland Security agent and basically says they're going to help her figure out a way to get her sister back or she's walking. It was a solid moment for the episode and for her as a character. And on the slightly more mundane side, she also asks for a cover story so she can explain away why she keeps getting called out at all hours for her job when she's essentially a history professor. As for Wyatt, we also get a little bit more backstory on him. We find out that his father was pretty much a deadbeat and that he was raised by his grandfather, who was a soldier in World War II, and instilled in him certain values. Values that ultimately led him to become a soldier and becoming the person that he is. And why he has such a hard time leaving the past as it is when he sees wrong things happening. Whether it's the assassination of Lincoln or basically any Nazi soldier alive and shooting at um, Allied soldiers. Especially when his grandfather is in Europe while they're there. Although they ultimately end up using the V-2 rocket as a distraction to be able to rescue Ian Fleming and Lucy, he had already talked Rufus into helping him dismantle the rocket, or disable it at least, and that would have drastically changed time, and it ultimately did, and it was one of the changes that they never really addressed, because that rocket would have at least killed some people, 
in Belgium where it was headed. How many people didn't die because that rocket didn't get fired? How many of them still died later on in the war? We just don't know, and it was one thing that they just never really addressed. And finally we have Rufus, who has been a very conflicted character from the beginning. And most of that has to do with the fact that Connor Mason keeps asking him to spy on Wyatt and Lucy. Why, we still don't know. We just know that it is on behalf of Rittenhouse. But you can really see how it is eating him up. And he actually asks Ian Fleming how he can handle all of the spying and the lying to people who are supposedly trusting him. And although he doesn't get quite the answer that Lucy did with her problems, it ultimately leads him to decide that he no longer wants to spy for Connor Mason and Rittenhouse. But we also find out that Rufus is conflicted by something other than his spying, and that is his mixed feelings over the fact that he helped to invent this time machine and it is now being used for what he believes to be nefarious purposes. A question that he poses to Von Braun, a man whose inventions were used for horrible purposes and then later used for very beneficial purposes. And on the comic relief side, there was some good funny moments, a lot of Bond puns between Wyatt and Rufus, um, and it was it, it, it was fun. It, it never got to the level that it just felt overly corny. And I love at the end when they come back and they find out that there was a new Bond film, at least new to them, that was essentially their adventure. Um, and I, I just think that's a lot of fun. I hope at some point in time, if, they, if our characters ever get any downtime where they can just kind of hang out together, that they um, rent out the movie and watch it together. Now something else I want to discuss briefly before I get into my primary questions is the fact of how many people they actually killed from the past in this episode. Up until now, the vast majority of the people that they've killed have been people from the present day that were traveling with Flynn. In this episode, they killed quite a few soldiers. Wyatt shot the two soldiers early on in the woods, one of whom had actually seen the time machine. And then later on, he kills the two guards when they're going in to sabotage the rocket. And then when they actually blow it up, they kill quite a few more. And then everyone that they shoot um, during their escape from the castle. It's some more changes to the timeline that really didn't get a lot of resolution. Although compared to what Flynn is attempting to do, these are relatively small ripples. Of course, as we've seen with Lucy's family, someone surviving and then having children that didn't exist before can drastically change individual lives. So I'm curious to see how long it's going to take for some of these smaller ripples to add up and we see some more significant changes like we saw with Lucy's family. Now moving on to the questions. Question number one, which is what is Flynn's mission? Now obviously Flynn gave us an answer to this question last episode when he said that his mission is to wipe Rittenhouse out of history itself. Now taking him at his word, and we really don't have a, a solid reason not to at this time, we still don't know exactly how he's going about it. How these specific missions would ultimately hurt Rittenhouse. He once again calls himself a patriot in this episode. And Lucy and the others continue to misguess what his missions are because they're still assuming that he is trying to wipe out America and not Rittenhouse. Now Flynn did talk about Rittenhouse with Lucy, but he basically just asked her to ask the others what Rittenhouse is. So at this point she really doesn't have a reason to assume that Rittenhouse is not just a reason for his actions, but the actual primary target of his actions. And as I said, we still don't know exactly how these missions help that cause. How does Von Braun going to the Soviets and not America directly hurt Rittenhouse, or at least hurt Rittenhouse more than it hurts America? I'm sure sooner or later she and Rufus are going to have an interesting conversation about the R word. And speaking of the R word, we have a new question this week, which is, what is Rittenhouse? This replaces one of our questions that got answered last week, namely, how did Flynn know about the time machine and how was he so successful in his mission to steal it? We found out last episode that Anthony was his inside man. One of our other primary questions was Rufus's mission to spy on the others on behalf of Rittenhouse, although it's not something that he wants to do. So I'm basically going to combine that into this new question because it all revolves around Rittenhouse and what exactly it is, something that we still don't know. When Rufus tells Connor Mason that he's no longer going to spy on the others, 
Connor tells him that he has no idea just how deep Connor is in with these people. We already know that Rittenhouse helped Rufus without his knowledge throughout his life, getting him into college, getting a good apartment for his mother, and probably getting him his job with Connor Mason. And it's becoming more and more likely that Connor is in a similar situation, where his success and riches may have come from the benevolence of Rittenhouse. Of course, None of this answers the secondary question, which is why does Rittenhouse want these recordings? That's something that we have no idea yet. But we did get a glimpse at the breadth of their power when Rufus is going home after telling Connor that he's no longer going to be spying. They're able to shut his car down. They have this whole ominous meeting with him where they basically threaten his family if he's not going to continue spying. And this is where Rufus has his what am I fighting for moment where he has to decide whether or not to, to betray his friends in order to protect his family. A decision that he ultimately makes. Now our third primary question is Lucy's notebook. And like the previous two episodes, that did not get mentioned at all. So let's just move on to the next one. Question four. Lucy's past and the, the changes therein. As I already mentioned, Lucy demands at the end of the episode that Connor's people help her figure out a way to get her sister back into the timeline. Which leads me to ask, why can't they go back in time to whenever her father met the woman that would ultimately be his wife instead of her mother, um, the descendant of a Hindenburg survivor who didn't exist prior to their intervention with Hindenburg in the premiere episode. The only real rules that we've been given is that you cannot travel within your own timeline. Well, this was before she was born, so that's not breaking that rule. Obviously, there's going to be some paradoxes involved any time that you go back in time with a mission to change the past. Once you change the past, how are you ever going on the mission in the first place? But there have been many, many, many paradoxes in this series so far, so that's not necessarily a dead end. So despite sounding like a broken record, this is another solid episode of a show that I'm enjoying. Um, it's a nice mix of action, um, drama, some good comic relief at times. As I said, um, Ian Fleming was a great addition in this episode. So at least this review video was not as late as the previous one. Hopefully by the end of this weekend I will be caught up with my videos and I can get into a more timely um, release schedule. If you have seen this episode though, I would like to talk about it. Um, what do you think about it? What do you think about my primary questions? Are there other major questions that you're pondering that I didn't mention? As always, you can subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other TV and movie reviews, and until next time, be careful what you say around Ian Fleming or you might become a Bond girl.